Much indeed. Very interesting segue from Hennes to Jay Sainsbury, which has posted first quarter like for like sales, excluding fuel, which is just below analysts' expectations. Overall sales for the period moved up 5.7%, but the UK's third largest supermarket group said the operating environment remains competitive. Last week, Qatari investment group Delta II upped its holding of Jay Sainsbury from 17 to 25 percent, igniting rumours it could be looking to take over the group. Well, for more on this, we're joined by Peter Leonardos, the Director of European Research at Churchill Capital. Peter, nice to see you Good again. Good to see you, Steve. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers first of all. Sainsbury sure. uh, clearly uh, finding that it is tough out there. We knew that. I mean, you've got four big players who are all going at it, hammer and songs. Price war mentioned last week by right. Asda and uh, Tesco. Um, have they picked off all the easy fruit and is it going to get tougher from here? You know, I don't think that's the case. When you look at where they're going to be expanding, they're going to be expanding into non-food items. They're going to be expanding into, you know, more of the DVDs, more of the CDs, more of the clothing. They have a women's line at Sainsbury's. They're going to bring in a men's line as well. They're going to be ex expanding existing stores, 10%. So I think there's enough expansion there away from low margin type products into higher margin type mm. products. You know, Sainsbury's is clearly saying that this is a way for them to go. Now, even though the sales were on the low side of analyst expectations, when you Look at the comparables that they're up against, the Q1 comparables last year. You had the World Cup last year. You had an unseasonably warm and dry dry June. So it's very tough comparables as well that analysts mm. could have got a little punchy on what they were expecting. Now, it's true that they, they did come in on the low of analyst expectations, but mm. Justin King this morning saying that he's in a strong position to grow. You know, it's the third year of their, their oh, growth all plan. All big targets say that, Peter, don't they? They always come up with the goods when they're under pressure. I mean, what I'm asking you is, this is clearly still a big target, isn't it's it? It definitely is still a big target. And I'm saying that people are going to go ahead and focus on the 200 basis point miss in the sales. And I think there's more of the story here. You know, my personal yeah. views is that at 581, where it closed yesterday, you know, the market was a little bit in, in uh, flux yesterday because of the Tesco numbers came in quite quite under expectations as well. And I think there's there's a lot more than just the numbers. Mm -hmm. There's Delta II at 25 percent. There's Robert yeah. Tichengas and his R20 investment vehicle at, at 5 percent. You know, that's combined 30 percent of the company. And the same as well, that family, Lord Sainsbury, his family still has about 15%. If we remember, Steve, if we look back two or three years, his family has been selling down their stake from 38% mm. to about 15% at prices in the 200s, 300s, and 400s, at prices they deem fair at those times. Sainsbury closed, as you say, at 581. The opening call from Cantor's this morning is 576.7. They've had, what, a a 70-odd percent performance over last year, the 42% increase over the last six months. What you're basically saying to me is, uh, I guess, is that if they come off too much this morning, it's a lovely entry point for somebody who wants to play the bid situation. Without a doubt, you have the Qataris building stakes at 575. You have the Qataris building stakes at 595. You have Robert Tichanga's rumored his stake build should have been about 535 to 550. Mm -hmm. You know, the CVC failed bid at 582. So I think there's enough stop gaps here to realize that we need to be focusing on items more more like property. You know, Justin King a few uh, weeks ago had said that his property is worth 8.6 billion pounds. Tell, tell me a scenario where we get to from here then. Do the Qataris go to the family and say, look, we will buy that stake and we will pay £6.30 and then is it done and dusted? The family wanted 600 a share. Justin King was happy at 582 a share. You know, I think we're getting there. To the extent that we're opening down, we're, you're going to clearly see stake building, and I think that is a is is a possible scenario. You're not only going to see a p potential Qatari bid situation, but I think you're going to see this whole opco propco that you hear about, the new REIT legislation that you hear about. Yep. There's going to be an opportunity them to unlock value. Justin King is saying his property is worth 8.6 billion. A lot of investors are saying it's closer to 10 billion. So I think that the story is not done yet. If we just look at the operating dynamics of the company, I think that we're losing the story and we're too narrow focused here. It's more of just an operating company. They do have yeah. almost 10 billion uh, pounds, according to some investors, in property as well. Yeah, very interesting. Certainly for Mr. Shen as well. Exactly. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today, Peter. Very Thank interesting you, Steve. story surrounding the background to Jay Sainsbury. Peter Leonardos, the Director of European Research at Churchill Capital.